Let's look at a new integral form. When we work with the power rule, we always found that x to the minus 1 or u to the minus 1 did not work with the standard power rule. So the definition of the natural logarithm actually paves a way to fill in that gap. That is, if u is a differentiable function of x, the integral of du over u or 1 over u du is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And there are lots of nice properties of the natural log that you'll see in your notes that you should take an opportunity to study. So now, of course, if we use uh, u as a variable and we need another uh, variable, we can also think of this form as dw over w equal natural log of the absolute w absolute value of w plus c, and that's what we're going to have. Uh, normally, you see most of these formulas written in terms of u, but I will allude to this as I go through these forms. Now, this form is what we need for the antiderivative of tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, and you'll see these in your notes. So I wanted to take the opportunity to show you how they work for secant and cosecant. Now for cosecant u du, we simply multiply by a convenient one. That is secant u plus tangent u divided by secant u plus tangent u. And then we just distribute the secant u to get the secant squared plus secant u tangent u. And now downstairs we have the w, so to speak, and upstairs, we have the differential. That is, the derivative of secant is secant tangent, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So we have the w dw, so we move directly to this. We get the natural log of the absolute value of secant u plus tangent u plus a constant. And this is the standard form of the antiderivative for secant. It's always written that way. Now, for the cosecant, we apply the same technique. That is, we start out with the cosecant of u du, and we multiply and divide by the convenient one, so to speak. That is cosecant u plus cotangent divided by cosecant u plus cotangent. And now we distribute the cosecant, and we get the cosecant squared plus cosecant u plus cotangent. And now we've got almost what we need. Let's just recall, the derivative of cosecant is the negative cosecant cotangent, and the derivative of cotangent is the negative cosecant squared. So what we need to do is rig. So we put in the negative that we need, and then we pay for it. So now this is table ready. We have the w downstairs and the dw upstairs. We have exactly this. So we get the negative of the natural log of the absolute value of cosecant u plus cotangent u plus an arbitrary constant. Now this is one form, but you know that the natural logarithm has really nice properties, and of course we'll use the theory of the natural logarithm to move to other bases uh, as we proceed through the course. But what I've marked here is use properties of the natural logarithm. So for instance, this is fine for the antiderivative, but some mathematicians, some engineers, students, whatever, prefer to move the, the negative into the argument. Okay, so that would just mean using the property, the power rule, to move this negative to a negative one power of the argument. And then that means you reciprocate the cosecant u cotangent u, as I've done here. But in order to get a new form, we use a conjugate method, which is a little bit more natural to you. So we multiply and divide by cosecant u minus cotangent u. Now, when we do that, upstairs is fixed, but the downstairs is just the difference of two squares. You get the cosecant squared minus the cotangent squared, but that's just a Pythagorean identity. That is equal to one. So, so lo and behold, we get another formula. So we just get the natural log of the absolute value of cosecant u minus cotangent u plus a constant. Now again, just like with trigonometric identities, these don't really look the same. Lots of students will get confused by this, but I will say this, take your pick, but be flexible. You can choose the form with the negative as, as a coefficient of the log, or you can choose the form where the negative has it been buried, basically, in the argument of the logarithm. And we are done.